Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for subscribing. I have reached 100 subscribers. So if you have subscribed already, thank you. Uh, I've just been doing this a few months, so it's, it's pretty fun to me. I enjoy creating these YouTube videos. So if you would like to learn more about Power Apps, uh, please subscribe, like, uh, it gives me encouragement to keep creating these. So on my 100th subscriber, I noticed that my most popular video is about charts in Power Apps. So I wanted to go more over charts today. So I just wanted to go ahead and pull in a line chart. And since stocks and Bitcoin have been super popular, I kind of wanted to base it off maybe stocks, uh, just kind of show a couple things that we can do. So right now in our chart, we have a line chart and it comes with our default data. That's Tokyo, our cities across, I guess, just a random numbers. So I wanted to show how you can use almost any property in a chart and you can give the power back to the users. So if we were to have an input and let's say a drop down and we gave it a label, let's go ahead and give it a label. If you'll notice that our chart, it actually has a grid. You can see the horizontal lines here, it's the grid. So what we can do is give power back to the user to have a grid or not, you know, why why is it up to us Power App developers if it has a grid or not? So if we went to the uh, drop down, and I'm going to call it uh, drop grid. How about that? Um, you'll notice in the chart, and so I click twice. So I click once inside the uh, line chart, and then once again. So I'm actually highlighting the chart. So if you notice, there's a grid style here, and so we have a couple options. It's either all or none. So why are we choosing if there should be a grid or not? So how about we give power back to the user? So, so uh, drop grid selected dot value. So in our drop down, what we're gonna do for our items is actually do a bracket and we can do all, or actually there's no um, quotations on this. It's either all or none. And so now we've given the power back to the user to have a grid or not. And so the user could come in here, take a screenshot, and send this graph off to whoever, his boss, or whoever wants to see the graph. So we can do that for almost every property on a Power App. So we have our properties on the side. I think another good one is how about uh, a border? So if you notice, we have a border thickness. Let's do the same thing. We can do a drop down, and it starts with a one. I'm going to give it a label again. We'll call it border. Give it a semicolon. So we have a border, and I'm going to give it a few options. Um, this time, one, two, three, four, five, and might as well have a zero too, of course, right? For no grid. So we have a drop down. I'm going to rename it uh, drop grid. And I always, oh, drop border. I always rename things because it just, if anyone else were to work on this Power App, it would help them locate uh, what I've done. So now we have our drop border and it has a few different options. If we go back in our graph, we can go to, oh, the composite line chart total and we can see the border thickness if we change this to drop border dot selected dot value we're given the power back to the user to choose if there's a border or not and so you can see that the border gets you know larger and I don't really like this bottom area part I'm gonna go ahead and take that out so now we have our chart title and I'm just going to keep on going from here, show you some more things you can do. So if we did a, a text input, uh, let's see, a text input, and say we wanted the char uh, chart title, we give it a label. And so we're giving the power back to the users so they could take a screenshot if they wanted. Right now you can't really print a, a power app. Uh, you can like convert it to HTML. I guess it could be possible, but I think the best thing to do is just take a screenshot of your Power App if you wanted to, and then you could print that way. So we have no 
no border now. And then we can change the chart title. So if we go to, um, it's already on text, and I'm going to rename this text input text uh, chart title. So now uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say this is the text or text chart title dot text. So you notice that it's blank now, but say we wanted it to be uh, Tesla. So that's our Tesla stock. So now we have a chart right with default data we've given the power back to the user you can see it highlights different points of the value so that's just some things you can think about you can do this with almost any power app part so you can go into the advanced or the properties and you can give the power back to the user if you want to give them a text input or a drop down give them options uh, to do what they want with your parts if it's a gallery a chart a data table. So I'm going to keep going from here. Um, I'm going to do another text input. And then uh, since this is stocks, we're going to want a, a date picker. So we're going to give them a date picker. We're not going to do based by time, but we'll just do per day. If that's going to make sense. Uh, let's see. So this is actually going to be the uh, stock price. And this is going to be the day. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these. I always rename everything. So text price. And the date picker is going to be date, date. How about date, date? Or date, day. That makes more sense. Date, day. So now we have two different text inputs. One is a date and one is just a text. So, what do we want to do? I want, when I put in a stock price in a day, I want it to fill out my chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another button. Or our first button, technically. We're going to create our first button, and it's going to submit. So this is going to submit to our chart. And so what it's going to do is it's going to actually create a collection. And we want to create a collection of our stock price in our day. So we're going to collect. And we're going to call it our day collection, I guess. That'll be the name of it. Um, and we want it to have a few different items. The first item is the date. So the date is actually going to be our date day dot selected date. So what we're doing is we're saying our collection the first column is going to be called date that's the name of our column and what is it going to be it's going to be whatever we put in the day uh, picker so now we're going to have a second column in our collection and that's going to be the price so the price is going to be the text price dot text so now we have two columns that we're going to collect and we're going to put into a collection. So if I go ahead and play this and we say, so Tesla is about 770, I guess, right now. It's dropped a little bit. We're going to submit. So you notice nothing changed, of course. We didn't change the background of our chart. But if we go to a file and we go to our collections, you'll notice that this is... Uh, the date and price that I just entered. So our collection now as we labeled it was date in the first column and price in the second column. And the name of our collection is day collection. So for our chart instead of displaying the uh, the default data what we want to do is actually change our items to our day collection. And you can see it's backwards right now. So what we want to do is change date on our x-axis, price on our y-axis. So we have one dot at 770. So let's go ahead and add another one. So the previous day, I, I know these are not exact. I'm just taking a guess. Maybe it was 790. You see, now it's displaying on our chart. It was 800. And it's displaying on our chart. Oh, oops, I've already made a mistake. 
So let me show you how to fix that mistake. So I have two dates. So the way that I would make it so you can delete items from your collection is either use a data table or a gallery. And I'm going to use a data table. So my data table is actually going to show, I'm going to make more room uh, for everything here. Let's make a good bit more room. Pull everything down. Hopefully everything's visible in my video. Just gonna keep pulling down. So now I have my data table. And my data table is gonna use my day collection. And you notice it's not showing any fields yet, so we want to go to properties and add the two fields, the date and the price. So now those two columns are there and this is the exact same thing that my collection has. So we have a data table with the date and price and that matches our columns. So in order to fix this, what I would do is I would create a button and it can be anywhere you'd like. I'm going to put it like right above my table and this is going to be a button and it could be an icon it could you know you could go in here and do a trash icon but I'm just going to do a button for to be simple and this is going to be delete so what's going to happen is when we hit the delete button we want it to delete the selected value on our chart so we have two two twenties I'm going to select that and I'm going to say remove from day collection the and it, we didn't rename rename this yet so it's data table one dot selected so now if I hit play and then I hit delete deletes it went away from our chart look at that so quick so easy we can add a different day so I'm just gonna put these in random order now just to show you another idea that I have so I'm gonna say the 24th 25 submit and then I'm gonna go back and put it in the 15th and say oh no um, we're definitely out of order in our chart so what do we want to do we want to sort the columns in our collection so where do we do that um, one good place to do it is right here in the items. So you can see I have items up at the top also. I can change this to sort by columns. And which columns? Um, first we're going to do it on our day collection. We're going to sort our day collection by the date. And we're going to do it uh, how about ascending. So look at there, even though our collection is out of order, now our chart is not putting date first. Now our chart is displaying the data by the correct date. So that's pretty neat. Um, it's pretty much mostly everything I wanted to show you. There was also something I, it took me forever to find and that was to change the color of this icon. I could never find it, but it's actually in advanced. Normally, you would think it would be in properties to change that color, but if you go to advanced, you can go down here to the icon background, add, and change the color of that. Uh, let's see if we can make it more of a red. Oh, maybe 206. That's a purple, it's all right. Orange. There we go. Now we have a, a red there. So it took me forever to figure out that color. But pretty much now we have a, a nice chart. So if someone wanted to, uh, disp you know, create their, I guess, their stock ticker through each day, you could save it to a collection. And then what I would do is I would just come into my snipping tool, take a screenshot, and print it even though I missed the title. But now your users have an, a nice way to create a chart uh, using your Power App. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers who've already subscribed to me. 
If you'd like to subscribe to me and like, like this uh, video, please do. And thank you. I'll see you next time.